In this video, I'm going to show you uh, how you can use the IPEX remote system to complete an apprenticeship enrolment in a fully remote and electronic way. The system is very flexible. It can be used for apprenticeships. It can be used for AEB. It can be used for any form uh, of enrolment or any electronic uh, paper-based form. The system is very flexible uh, and there are lots of different ways you can uh, get these forms completed. Um, if you've got information already about the learner or the employer or the qualification, one option is to import that data that will create uh, a user profile. And so when that individual opens up the form, it will automatically pull that data from the profile and pre-populate fields. In the example I'm going to show you today, we are assume, assuming we've got no information and we're going to send the form um, to the apprentice, uh, to the provider and to the employer. So I'm going to be all three parties in the process today. I am going to use a single email account just for um, ease of demonstration, um, but it should give you a very good idea of the features and the functions uh, that the system offers. Uh, the example today is just an example. The forms are fully editable. You can create your own forms. We can create the forms for you. Uh, so it's a very flexible system. So I'm in the IPEGS portal now in the form builder, and I am actually going to send um, this form. So we've got an apprenticeship enrollment form, um, which includes the commitment statement and apprenticeship agreement. They are three separate forms, uh, but we have them as part uh, of one system and that's to be able to auto populate and pull through data. So in this case I'm going to simply send an email uh, to this uh, individual email address. I can send that out to multiple uh, email addresses. It will send a separate email to each and every one uh, and you can customize the email subject and the email text. So I'm just going to send that through uh, now to my apprentice. So if I check now, you can see uh, that the email has come through. We are ABC Training Provider. So ABC Training Provider has sent you an apprenticeship enrollment form. So I click on that link. The emails are fully branded as the training provider or college. And as you can see here, a very simple message. ABC Training Provider sent you an apprenticeship enrollment form to complete. You can access the form by clicking on the link below. Now, before I click on that link, I'm just going to log out of the portal just to keep things simple. So as soon as I click on that link, it will open up the apprenticeship enrollment form. Now these forms are fully mobile optimized. They will work on any internet connected device. So phone, tablet, laptop, PC, um, so any, any device that has uh, an internet connection. And the way this form has been set up is we've split it into apprentice, provider and employer. Uh, again, this is completely flexible, but I'm just going to go straight in uh, as the apprentice. Now, at this point, we have no information, okay? So I'm going to very quickly uh, enter some information here. Uh, date of birth is a, a very easy scroller. This is what, you know, most people are used to with their phones. Um, and I'm just going to put in some, some random information. So I'm going to put test in just to speed up the process. Uh, we have got validation in here. Um, let me just copy that email address again. Uh, we have got validation in here for things like, um, you know, maximum and minimum number of characters. Um, we've got pick lists for gender, national insurance number. Again, that will be set to a maximum of nine and a minimum of nine. So I can't put in any more than nine characters. But if I put in less, it will uh, flag it up. Uh, test. Again, simple things like pick lists here. My nationality, again, we've put in a pick list of all the different nationalities that are available. Is English my first language? If I put yes, that's fine. If I put no, you'll see that it will open up another option here. So we can then choose uh, from a list of languages. Have we lived in the UK or EE for the last three years? EEA, yes, that's fine. No, again, it will give me an option then to select any of the countries. So we've got very clever conditional logic built in so that um, you can show and hide fields, which makes the form filling process much, much easier. 
Learning difficulties I do not have is fine. I do have, again, it will show me my options then uh, for any uh, disabilities or learning difficulties and so on and so forth. So you can see here that we've got mandatory fields, we've got optional fields. Again, I'm just gonna whiz through here. Now we've got a, a special uh, feature uh, called image blur. So in this case, if I was on my phone now, I could take a photo uh, of my passport. This is just a, an example passport. Or if I'm on my computer, I can upload um, my identification. So in this case, it could be a passport, driver license, etc. When this comes through to the system, uh, you can check that ID. And when you confirm that you've checked it, it will blur the image uh, so that it's there's no readable data or it can actually delete the file. So it's completely up to you, but it facilitates the ability to check um, potential apprentices identification, but also remove that identification or remove that data so that you're not storing uh, that information. Previous education, so we've got our options here. Again, these are all optional and flexible. And what we've done in here is that you can uh, specify your GCSE or functional skills grade. We're then asking you to upload uh, a photo of that certificate and specifying the date awarded. And again, there's multiple different ways uh, you can, you know, you can go through their previous uh, education. We've then got uh, employment details, uh, job title, so apprentice um, business admin, for example. How long have they been in employment, current role, why they require the apprenticeship, and so on and so forth. So all standard uh, questions. We've then got the information about how we use personal information, uh, how they're happy to be contacted, data protection, etc. A declaration, and then this, the apprentice will sign the first part of the enrollment form. Okay, So I can sign my electronic signature. Again, it can be done uh, on the screen of your phone, a tablet, uh, mouse pad, mouse. There is also the option, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a feature you can turn on if you want them to type their signature, which types it in a, a signature type format. So we've got our electronic signature, printed name, and the date and time that it was signed. I'm now going to go to the next section. So this is now uh, going through uh, the key policies checklist. So this is just an example to say that we've reviewed these, um, these features. These could be links to each of those policies that you want uh, the apprentice to check. Uh, I'm then in the declaration now, so I'm going to read through this. So this is what I, you know, this is what I, the apprentice, will do. And again, I'm going to then sign that off. I'm going to go to the next section now. So this is the apprenticeship agreement. Uh, some of the information will have already auto-populated from the rest of the form. And I'm going to sign this off. Again, I'm just doing that very quickly. And that's me as the apprentice. That's my part of the enrollment process complete. So I've completed the enrollment form. Uh, I've gone through the commitment statement and the apprenticeship agreement at that stage and I'm now ready to submit. So when I submit that form, it will do a check. So it'll then do a validation check to say, right, have you put in the right number of characters? Have you missed any mandatory fields? In this case, I didn't put enough characters in for the phone number. So I'll put, a, put an extra, uh, I'll just put it in as a number. Let me try and submit again. And this time it submitted the form uh, and that's the process complete. So as you can see, I mean, I've, I've whizzed through that really quickly, but it is a very uh, easy process for uh, the apprentice. And generally, the apprentice has uh, more to complete uh, than the employer. So if I now go back to my email, you will see that the form has now automatically been sent to the training provider. So we've got that built in. So imagine now I am the training provider, so I could be the BDE, I could be the assessor, I could be the admin team. You can specify who that's to go to. And you can see here it says that we've got um, a, 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 an applicate, a friendship enrollment form to come through. So if I click on this now as the provider, give it a second to open up. So I'm the provider now, but if, for example, I did click on the apprentice button, 
I am not able to edit to any of the fields that the uh, learner has added. What we do is we lock the fields down for each party, and that ensures that people don't, you know, edit fields they shouldn't be. So I'm going to click as the provider now, and you can see the fields that are mandatory for me are now highlighted in yellow. So uh, I'm going to go through, I already know um, the employer. Uh, I'm just going to set it as IPEGs in this case. Uh, I'm just going to put, again, test information here. So we can specify, um, so we'll call this um, Simpson. You've got the option here. So I'm I'm putting in the information that I know about the employer, but there are obviously fields here that the employer needs to complete, and they will complete that in the next stage of the process. Uh, so let me just go. Just trying to remember which email addresses I'm using. Again, this information will be completed by the employer. I'm now going to put in the EDRS number. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to put in some uh, any kind of agreement identifier reference. And is the uh, employer ed eligible for the 16 to 18 uh, incentive at this stage? So yes, yes or no. So I'm going to put yes in this case. I'm then going to put in the student number, if there is a student number, uh, the ULN, if I have that. And I'm, we've predefined the UK PRN in this case because I'm the provider. I know what my UK PRN is. Is this a new learner or a progression? Uh, and who is the who is the pro, pro, program tutor? So who is the tutor or assessor at that stage, if you know uh, who it is? I'm then going to choose the apprenticeship program. So in this case, we're going for carpentry and joinery. And I can then add in the sub-aims, the start dates and end dates. Now, this is done in a, in a manual process on this form, uh, but you have got the ability to auto-populate uh, field sub aims can be quite complex if you're doing uh, frameworks uh, and standards still obviously it'll be standards um, only uh, eventually but you have got the ability to use conditional logic to auto populate fields um, we can set the program type um, the pathway and we can then do start and end dates so I'm just going to put some uh, dummy dates in here so start date, practical period, start date, practical period, end date, and we will put a variation in the end date there, for example. So we've got our start and end dates in there. Uh, we've calculated the, the number of uh, off the job hours. Now again, you can automatically calculate uh, the off the job hours uh, on the form itself, providing you've got uh, the necessary fields completed. Um, we're going to put the uh, endpoint assessment in there and any specific code. Uh, I've the learners already completed the initial assessments in this case, so I'm just going to put in the results there. They're not doing uh, ICT, and again, this is to do then with the apprenticeship funding and fees. So again, I'm just going to put dummy information in here for now. I'm going to spend too much time on that. And I'm now going to sign uh, as the provider this part uh, of the uh, enrollment form. I'm now going to the commitment statement and you'll see that the commitment statement has auto populated from the parts of the enrollment form. And this is why we have they're three separate forms, but we have them combined uh, on the system so that it can automatically pull all this information through. Um, the main provider details can be pre-specified. In this case, I'm just uh, I've got them added uh, as pick lists, but they could be uh, fixed within the form itself. Um, it's pulled in the information from the endpoint assessment information, and there's no subcontractor um, in this case. Uh, I'm then going to sign the provider part of the commitment to the program. trying to remember who I was uh, and I'm now at the apprenticeship agreement stage in fact let me just go back so you can see here again it's pulled all the data through from the enrollment form into the apprenticeship agreement uh, just need to put in the off the job hours and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to send this through um, to the employer 
Now again, this can be predefined, but in this case, I'm just going to uh, put in the information here. Let me just send it to the right uh, email. One thing about doing it this way is you can actually specify a due date. So you could say, right, this form needs to be completed by uh, this time next week. And if it's not been submitted um, by a certain time, I'm going to send a reminder. So I might say, right, 48 hours before this date, if the form has not been submitted by the employer, the system will send uh, a reminder email to the employer. So I'm going to click Submit Now. Uh, again, it's checking if there's any validation issues. There isn't. We've completed the mandatory fields. Uh, we've done all the data uh, as it needs to be. So again, I'm going to go back to my emails now. So imagine the employer now has received uh, this email. So Lisa was the employer in this case. Again, it's a standard message. It says you've been sent an apprenticeship enrollment form from ABC Training um, to review, complete and sign. And it also now includes the due date. So it says, please ensure you complete and submit the apprenticeship enrollment form by the 15th of April. If you have any questions, please contact your ABC training provider. So, so a very clear uh, message within the email. So as the employer now, I'm going to click on the apprenticeship enrollment form. Again, in the same format as last time, if I do click uh, any fields that are not mine, I can't edit them. So again, if I went in and I tried to change uh, the provider's details, I'm not able to do that. So I'm going to click as the employer this time. Now, some of this information was pre-filled by the employer, but any information that, um, that hasn't been uh, completed is highlighted in yellow. So actually, in this case, is the same. Um, the employer contact is also the line manager and mentor. I'm going to specify how many hours a week um, that the employer is, uh, the apprentice is working. They're employed for 38. They've been with me for less than three months. They have um, six weeks annual leave uh, and you can confirm that they're spending the time in England in this case. So what we've also got in here is we've also included the um, apprenticeship incentive uh, option. So if I say, uh, no, I haven't got under 50 employees, that's fine. But if I say yes, what this then does is it then asks me for how many employees do I have? And we've got the small employer declaration in here. We're asking them to confirm um, that in the 12 months before the apprenticeship that their uh, employee numbers is not exceed 49. And um, they can then enter their bank details so that the incentive payment is set up. So historically, um, you know, this would have been done as a separate form. But in this case, we include it um, as part of the main enrollment. Uh, and again, we ask the employer to then sign for, for that part um, of the of that part of the sort of declaration, if that makes sense. Okay, so again, that's a show hide option. If I set no to that, that information will be hidden. So I click uh, the employer button again. Again, I go through the data protection information. You can see that the apprentice is all already signed. So I'm just going to sign this very quickly. Go to the next section for me. Again, in this case, this is the policies checklist for the employer. Again, these could be links to each of the policies. It could be a link to a video. And then there is my section there as part of the commitment statement. I can review the apprenticeship agreement. Again, everything has been completed. I'm going to sign the final part, hit the submit button, and that is the process complete. So that is the uh, apprentice, the provider, and the employer completing the enrollment form, commitment statement, and apprenticeship agreement from start to finish. So obviously I've gone through this really quickly, but you can see how the, the, the form flows really well. Uh, the buttons can jump uh, the user to the relevant parts of the form, so they're not having to scroll through pages and pages and pages. 
Now that form has been uh, completed, uh, I'm going to log into the portal. Now, as the form owner, I will have received an email notification to say that the form has been submitted uh, by all parties. So I'm just going to log back into the portal now. Bear with me a sec while I log into um, a demo account very quickly. Shift demo. So this is where um, the form gets submitted to. So if I go to the submitted form section, uh, you can see now that this form has been submitted. Uh, this is the form we've just submitted. And you can see that it's highlighted in red with um, a little alert. Now this means that their ID has been uploaded and it needs to be checked so it can then be blurred. So the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna view the form. So I can just do a view um, the good thing about this is you can view and check straight away to make sure uh, that you're happy with all the information because we can also request a change, which I'm going to show you in a sec. So I'm going to check the ID. So this is a, it's a good, clear picture. Again, this is just a, a, an example uh, uh, passport. Um, now I'm going to check the rest of the information very quickly. Um, you know, now because of the validation, all of the information will be in there. There shouldn't be any missing information. But it might be that, you know, I just need to do a quick validation check myself, um, check all the signatures are in place, check all the information is populated as, as, as expected. And at the bottom of the screen here now, um, we have all checks complete. So if I click on that check option now, it will prompt me to say that this will permanently delete uh, or blur the information that's been specified. So in this case, it's the ID. It could also be the certificates, for example. And once we've done that, give it a few seconds, you will see that that form has now uh, gone to green. And if we just go back in and do a quick check, we've set this particular form to blur the ID. Uh, and as you can see there, that ID has now been blurred. The key thing is, is that we've got a record that, you know, the ID was uploaded and it has been checked uh, by a member of the team. Now, let's say, for example, uh, that form is now complete. I could download that as a PDF. I can uh, export that data to CSV to import into my MIS system. Uh, but, you know, let's say, for example, um, Let's just use an example here. Let's just say we needed to request a change. So because I've completed this form now, um, it because I've done all checks complete, that form is complete. But in this case here, this example form, um, it's not been completed yet. So I'm going to request a change. So let me just click on request change. And I'm going to uh, send it to a third party. And what you can do here is you can go in and you can specify um, a field that they need to update or fix. So let's say uh, they need to add in their, their home address and their home telephone number. Um, they've made a mistake with their national insurance number. What I can then do is say, dear Joe, can you please update the highlighted fields? Hit the send button and that will send an email to the learner. They can click on the link. They can update only those fields, hit the submit button, and the form will come back in uh, to the system, which can then, it can then be checked again, uh, reviewed, and approved as required. Within the portal here, you can create multiple folders and subfolders, and as forms are completed based on their status, they can be moved into specific folders uh, accordingly. So that's a very quick demonstration of how uh, the IPEGS remote system can be used to complete forms remotely and a little uh, snippet of how the forms can be managed once they're submitted into the portal. If you've got any questions or you'd like to know more information, please get in touch uh, by visiting the website www.ipegs.pro.uk.